Hello everyone, welcome to International Trade Policy. Today, we're going to talk about the different rules and regulations in importation and exportation. With the advent contribution of technology to globalization, a lot of countries uh, have been participating in international trading because they believe that openness to trade would bring a catalyst for a strong economic growth and they're going to generate employment that would reduce poverty. According to Patricia Francis, the Executive Director of International Trade Center, countries that have been reaped most benefits from international trade have focused on national trade policies and regulatory reforms that created a business-friendly environment so that firms could achieve export success. However, because of trade policy is a complicated process that demands balancing competing and disparate interests, the process of reform is challenging for both the public and private sectors. Meeting these challenges calls for action on two fronts. That's why for our learning objectives, let us define the legal framework that regulates import and export. Let us also be familiarized with the export and import policy. And lastly, today we're going to explore the general provisions with regards to export and import. We understand that government creates and implements policies, laws, and regulations needed for trading. These policies must be implemented well for a mutually reinforcing framework that fosters competitiveness in a business-friendly environment. Because these rules and regulations of importation and exportations have a direct impact in exporter or importer's ability and also with the country's international trading. International export and import policy had been an economic instrument of so many countries to promote their exports and limit imports. If you are going to take a look at the websites of the Department of Trade and Industries in every country, Japan, South Korea, America, China, China, all of the country, um, for sure you could see and they had provided an information and online government services per companies looking for business opportunities inside and outside their countries. You could see practical information also about policy issues, local contact points to networking links. So this policy in every destination may affect price change due to regulations. It is not directly with the price of the product, but of course with the cost of the processing and securing of documents and permits to other country would really give a hard uh, a head aid to the exporter. Import and export are big businesses all over the world despite of these restrictions and the traders could be able to find ways on how they could minimize expenses but gain a lot of profit. So let us define first what is import. Import represents the bringing of foreign goods or services in another country where the products will be processed, used, sold, or exported. South Korean import costs a total of 503.3 billion US dollar in 2019, up 15.3% since uh, 2015. The number one imported products of South Korea is mineral fuels, in, including oil. Uh, that is 25.3% of your country's total imports. You are also importing electrical machinery equipment, uh, machinery including computers, optical technical medical apparatus, vehicles, iron, ores, uh, organic chemicals, and a lot more. For China, they are importing around $2.069 trillion worth of goods from around the globe in 
2019. The number one uh, import of China is also electrical machinery, mineral fuels, including oil, machinery, including computers, or optical uh, technical medical apparatus, vehicles, and a lot more. So these import goods are the products that are coming from another country going to your country, inside your country, for consumption, for reselling, or for manufacturing purposes. Exportation is the other way around. Okay? You send your products or goods to other country. The same way you are, you are exporting your products, Okay, your domestic goods to other country for other country to buy it to use it to sold it or to re-export those kind of products the most exported products in the world according to a monthly full that is cars which were 699.8 billion dollars and the crude oil is 655.3 billion dollars the top export of South Korea are integrated circuits, cars, refined petroleum, passenger and cargo ships, and vehicle parts, which makes South Korea uh, to be in the fifth place, okay, the fifth largest exporter in the world in 2017. Selling and buying products from other country to your country is really quite complicated you really need a lot of knowledge in terms of the policy or regulations and guidelines that you must follow in every single step or process of importation and exportation and here are some of the important rules uh, in importation and exportation number one we have embargo act it is a policy that prohibits ships from trading in all foreign ports and this was according to president uh, signed by president thomas jefferson in america i know that here in korea in my country in china in vietnam we have a related policy in terms of importation and exportation and if we found out that one country or one a company is violating these rules and regulations the sanctions or the punishments might be one of them is embargo act sometimes embargo act is not only related with the violation of the import and export uh, policy in 2000 uh, in, in 1979 the first sanctions were imposed by the United States to Iran, wherein a group of radical students seized the American embassy in Tehran and took the people inside hostage. The sanctions by Executive uh, 12170 included raising about $12 billion, uh, billion dollars of Iranian assets, including bank, gold, and other properties, and a trade embargo. The sanctions was lifted in January 1971-1981 as part of the Algiers Accords, which was negotiated settlement of the hostage releases. The Embargo Act can be trade embargo, a strategic embargo that is related to the sale of military-related goods, and sanitary embargo. It is enacted to protect people, animals, and plants. A good example of the uh, World Trade Organization uh, restrictions imposed is the ban of import and export of endangered and animal uh, and plus a plant species. Uh, I'm going to give a specific uh, trade embargoes in different parts of the world like U.S. sanctions on Nicaragua in 2018 uh, because of the Nicaraguan government's treatment of anti-government protester wherein 200 people were being killed and also uh, the sanctions of U.S. to Russia which penalized Russian officials for their alleged involvement 
in 2016 U.S. presidential election and the European Union sanctions on Russia, okay? Because Russia annexed Ukraine's Crimean Peninsula in 2013 and back pro-Russia separatist fighting the government in eastern Ukraine. And the common one is the United Nations sanctions on North Korea uh, because of the nuclear test. The sanction prohibited the supply of heavy weapons and select luxury goods. The next important policy in importation and exportation is the Enemy Act. Okay? The Enemy Act means that if you are the enemy of United States during the World War One and Two, um, the the states, the United States, will not allow their country or the states to participate in trading with their enemy. But if they already have a peace agreement, then this kind of uh, enemy act will be lifted up. The second important policy in importation and exportation is the Neutrality Act. This is the policy that limits United States involvement in future wars that is given by President Herbert Hoover because they had seen the impact or and the effect of war in the industry, especially with the individual lives of their citizen. The third, uh, the fourth important policy in importation and exportation is the Export Control Act. This policy he accomplished two tasks. Number one is to avoid scarcity of critical commodities in a likely pre-war environment. And the second one is to limit the exportation of material to pre-World War II Imperial Japan that is according to the President Franklin Roosevelt during that time where technology is not that uh, rampant or there, there's no sufficient development of technology, the President had prohibited or limited the country to export the, the commodities that they have in preparation with the in case there will be a war and also they had limit the exportation of materials to the to the Japan country because of the they are the enemy of the state what are the other legal basis of export and import trade policies remember as I had told you every country has a specific rules and guidelines on how they're going to sell their products abroad and how they're going to send imported goods to their country and we call it like foreign acts it covers the outward that is in, uh, exportation and the inward movement of goods and that is uh, import and also the legal basis for import and export trade policy is the Foreign Exchange Management Act. So these are the guidelines or this policy will provide the guidelines for the exporter or importer on how much dollar it will be equivalent to their local currency. So this policy is the uh, the policy that limits a company exposure to foreign currency fluctuation. In most cases, that is done by companies that engage in foreign trade. How they could be able to control that? They ban the use of foreign currency within the country and they ban locals from processing foreign, uh, foreign currency and also they have a fixed exchange rate and they restrict the amount of currency that may be imported or exported. Another legal basis or framework of export and import trade policy is the Customs Act. Every country has a rules on how you are going to sell your business into other country. Every country has a rule on how you're going to uh, make your product could be able to enter to every country's port. That is the custom act, okay? For them to prevent, okay, the illegal smuggling. 
These rules and regulations are very strict in the illegal transportation of objects, substance, information, or people, such as house or buildings into a prison or across an international border in violation of applicable laws or other regulations. The next is the Export Quality Control and Inspection Act. Okay? It pertains to the policy of a quality control and ins inspection. That's why when you enter into one country, you have to submit a lot of documents. Okay? Sanitary permit, business permit, insurance, and also your financial capacity to do the uh, importation or exportation. Why? Because it will manifest if you are really selling or if you are shipping a quality products. Every particular detail of the product must be described. And every country is strengthening the export trade through quality control and pre-shipment uh, inspection. This acts prohibit the export of substandard goods as well as the product which do not fulfill the requirements that is being given under the Export Act. There are long lists okay, of the rules and regulations that you have to comply with the exportations. Here are the import and export requirements. Number one, you need to get a license to operate or it is being known to be LTO. It is a, a permit that giving you an authority to import or export goods. Registered products, you need to get a certificate of your products that your products have undergone a series of testing in the Department of Trade and Industry and so as with the Bureau of Food and Drug Industry is related with food. The third is import and export permits. Okay? And what are those permits? Sanitary permit, business permit, and like also the, uh, the license to operate. Then the fourth one is undergo custom inspection for you to secure or get a custom clearance. They're going to check your declared product against with the invoice that you had submitted with the custom and the actual uh, content of the container band where the, the actual uh, features of the product that you had declared in the custom because sometimes uh, there are cargoes wherein contains illegal illegal substance okay, that's being used for weapon or for for medicine that's why they have to check it very strictly and the fifth one is relevant invoice of transactions as i told you they're going to check the number the quantity and the quality one of the issues nowadays in custom administration is that some organizations and individuals like custom brokerage services, custom brokers, they have taken advantage of using digital signatures of enterprises which have high level of low compliance in order to implement customs declarations. Some of them have, uh, they are exporting a goods without consent of the import export enterprise for the purpose of is smuggling. They declare wrong goods uh, and also they declare the wrong information of the cost due to tax evasion or for the purpose of shirking goods management policies as import export goods requiring, requiring a permits. Let's move on with the particular export regulation. Okay, we have number one, protect national security. Purity. Why they are giving a strict uh, ruling about the uh, export of different military equipments or materials? Okay, of course, it would this could threaten the peace and order of the nation. Example: high performance computers, software, and technology to destinations and end users and end users. It means that. 
if the if your product is similarly related to any mass production of weapon or that will threaten the security okay, or the national security and you could uh, face a lot of exportation i think here in korea it is not allowed and also in other country it is not allowed to export a weapon unless given a permission by the uh, if there will be an agreement or trade agreement between two countries only two countries okay, can do such kind of transaction but of course with the permission of the world trade organization because it might trigger the war between other countries if they it, it will become known to them if there will be some alliances because if they are uh, shipping uh, uh, weapon or military equipment to other country from another country it means that they are doing some alliances that promotes and trigger or provoke a uh, world war. Another export regulations we have is the further foreign policy goals. It restricts the export or the export of goods and technology like human rights, regional stability, and anti terrorism so th these are the policy that will protect humans before being from being traded and being exploited in other country that's why we have a policy against human trafficking and some of the terrorists are recruiting young ages to be part of their group that's why so uh, there are a lot of foreign uh, policy especially in immigration policy or immigrant policy that will uh, protect the humans and also the uh, the other creatures there are also rules and regulations that preserve scarce natural resources it restricts the export of goods crude petroleum and certain inorganic chemicals of course if there will be a rampant export of trees oil minerals animals and agricultural products definitely it will gonna have a devastating effect to our natural res, uh, natural resources that's why there's a lot of uh, policy you can find in the department of energy and natural resources that will restrict the exploitation of natural resources in our country there's a particular island uh, palawan we're in they have uh, a jigsaw regulations if you have a jigsaw um, you have to register your tool to department of environmental and natural resources why because that could be a subject of cutting big trees and they are they're not allowing you to cut any single trees without a permission okay, to protect the trees to protect the the natural habitats of animals in the forest they prohibit uh the cutting of trees and so as if you're going to if you have that seed so you have to register and ask permission to use that jig so another export regulation is related to the controlled proliferation so these policies are to prevent the proliferation of weapons of mass destruction such as nuclear chemical and biological weapons it is to stop okay, or limit the or control the distribution of weapons of mass destruction not only with the weapon but according to the united nation they had extended these counter proliferations to finance and interdict the movements of uh, related items that's why there are a lot of cases in international trading about uh sending a big money to other country wherein the recipient is unknown and there is like a connivance especially nowadays that 
uh, in every part of the world, they are exper- experiencing a uh, global banking fraud. There are some connivance from one bank to another country's bank about the transfer of money. We're in, uh, they are, since they could no longer transfer my uh, weapon, okay, uh, a mass weapon for destruction or chemical or biological weapon, what they are doing is they are just financing these terrorists okay, to conduct this uh, uh, terrorism act. What are the penalties for non-compliance? Every country has a different degree of punishment. Number one is the criminal penalties, either fines or imprisonment okay, with a particular years. You're going to pay a huge amount. Second is civil penalties, revocation of export license, denial of export privileges, impositions of a fine, denial of tax benefits. And the worst scenario is they might face embargo act, wherein they could no longer enter import and export to a country. Now let us proceed with the uh, specific import and export policy of different countries so that you will be familiar uh, with this kind of policy if in the future you want to have your uh, investment in importation and exportation. In terms of import policy, they have anti-Islamic exim policy. Exim is ex. Uh, export and import policy it was it is in pakistan and exim policy for a period of five years 1997 to 2002 under section 5 of the foreign trade development and regulation act okay, so if in case that you're going to have a violation in importation and exportation in india they also have this exim policy definitely you will experience some punishment okay. for import policy set source shall not be eligible to import more than 100 percent of the annual entitlement for such restricted raw materials or packing goods and the industrial units and that is in bangladesh so if you import a goods in Bangladesh, it should not be more than 100% of the annual entitlement for our raw materials or packing goods. So if they are producing 10 kilos of rice, they could not uh, import the same 10 kilos of rice. It should be less than the, the 10 kilos of rice. For export restrictions, you may encounter minimum export price. You have to follow the export price, the export duties that is tax, the export bonds. There are some products that are not allowed to be exported like here in Korea due to coronavirus. Um, you are not allowed to send any mass surgical mass any kind of mass to other country wherein they also have coronavirus because maybe um, they are protecting the the people here in korea and the possibility of of the 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 coronavirus will gonna explode again that's why you could not send any mass in other country Export quota is that there is only a particular volume or number of products that you can export to other countries. So you have to take note of that. Export copying meaning that is the cost of inspections. Okay? You have to comply, you have to follow the different rules and regulations of the custom administration, especially in securing or getting a license. And lastly is the export permit. Okay, in international trading, you have to present a lot of documents. I had given you a while ago what are those documents, but the, those are just the least common documents because 
before you get an, a one permit, there will be another set of documents that you have to submit for you to get that one document or one permit. And if you if there will be ten documents or permit, you in in each document there is another documents that you have to compile or to have to submit. Common is about like a uh, tax certificate, insurance, business permit, license to operate, okay, for, before you get another permit. If you plan to do an importation business, here are the list of elements that you have to consider. Okay? Uh, number one is entry of goods. How those products could be able to enter into your country considering the the process of uh, importation and the custom administration rules and regulations. Secondly, examinations of goods. Does the product approved to the Bureau of Food and Drug Industry or Department or a particular uh, agency that approved that product? So there must be a product certification. It should not uh, create hazardous effect uh, to human if it is for human consumption and it should uh, possess a good quality or reputation of the product especially the durability of the products the third one is classification appraisement and liquidation it is not only with the product but also with the company uh, capacity to uh, to cope up in terms of finances or in terms of technical assistance in doing importation business. In terms of appraisement, okay, it is about uh, the customs appraisal or how they're going to, uh, to evaluate the value of your products because the the custom is going to use a method of determining and fixing a value to a product. When products are imported in your country, the importer must classify and value the products. Why? Because of tax declaration. You have to, to present the right amount of the product value subject for tariff or taxations. And the last one is the restricted merchandise in countries of origin or the COO because there are countries, especially the country who are infected with like virus, some microorganism or some biological weapon or if there will be some rampant uh, epidemic uh, problem, okay, you have to consider that because the your country might not accept those kind of product because of the origin country of the product like what happened in the african swine flu and the birds flu okay and put in mouth disease and last one is we have the african uh, swine flu okay we're in uh your country and also my country do not allow um meat coming from that country because of that incident now let us check some of the examples of importation practices here in korea uh let's go on the aspect of documents so if you want to uh import uh, products here in korea here are some of the documents that you need to comply Commercial invoice, certificate of origin, packing list, bill of lading, maritime insurance, import declaration, and special documentation. These documents will qualify you to become a licensed importer here in Korea. According to Products Nature, certain goods for import or export may be subject to an authorization, license, rules of quality or packaging especially here uh there in terms of labeling there must be uh korean letters or it should be translated in hangul okay so that the local customer will be able to know uh what is the product descriptions i found a website in 
uh, the it is uh, how to export import.com there's the question how to get permission from importing countries custom to take import delivery of cargo arrive the answer here is that either you importer or your custom broker can file the necessary document for import custom clearance procedures in importing country as the general standard all of the pertinent documents required for import clearance must be ready upon the arrival of the uh, of the products here in Korea like 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 what I had mentioned another question here is that how does carrier of goods released import cargo arrive in importing country once after arrival of goods in importing country customs port delivery order has to be obtained from carrier of goods at import customs location of importing country so this is applicable for both sea import clearance and air import clearance because um you are going to pay the warehouse per day so if, if you're not uh, going to comply with the custom regulations definitely um your and the entry of your product might be rejected or it may be delayed okay it will delay the the release of the products in the uh custom i think that then the general documentation required for importation and exportation uh is quite the same all over the world but they have only some modifications and specific requirements okay for usa import practices they are they are going to require you for custom clearance license to operate country of origin marking clearance from cbp that is the custom and border protection as uh, specific especially those products under prohibited and restricted and if you are from cuba iran north korea sudan syria and burma um there is an embargo okay uh economic sanction for this uh, country so you, they are not allowed to import and export products from this country and also i had gathered some tips for importing goods to the united states for beginners i get it in the saleho.com first is research the laws trade uh, trade barriers and sorry if you have to be familiar with this although us uh, might be known to be a trade friendly nation but still they have a strict laws and procedures that you must follow secondly is make real connections in the export country you have to rub elbow with the um, existing importer in the united states you have to know them you have to expand your network you have to dig a lot of linkages that would help you and connect you with the uh, CBP and the Custom Administration of United States. Third is consider consulting an expert, okay? Navigating the laws and regulations of importing United States can be really challenging, okay? Sometimes the rules and re regulations in the book is not that uh, we interpret it right, so we have to find and consult to the expert so you can find the uh, u.s custom brokers okay in different um websites for it is get the required license bonds and permit you have to prove yourself that you had the you have the capability to do importation business you have a, a sustainable budget okay and that could be for a long term okay, of importation business in United States. And lastly, you have to educate yourself. Okay? It's really difficult to run a business, especially in international market. You have to undergo a series of education and training. And you have to also to avoid some mistakes because your credibility as importer is very important in united states importation industry okay there are a lot of online courses about importing like udemy international career institute and global training center
understanding the different importation and exportation rules and regulations will give you a guide if it gives it in the future you want to be an importer or exporter in different countries. The bottom line is that you have to study, educate yourself about the rules and regulations, the documents that, uh, that are needed to be submitted, what are the steps and procedures that you need to follow, and as much as possible, you have to do clean business all of the time because you may not know uh, if, the, if the government might find you Okay, might, they might found out that you are doing an under the table or red tape just to, uh, to expedite the process of claiming of your cargoes or your product. Um, it will give you a heartache. It will give you um, a lifetime sanctions. Okay, and it will cost you a lot of time and money and effort. Okay, so I think that would complete our discussion. So if you have any further question, just send me a message through my email and I'm going to respond it as soon as possible. Uh, this is your professor, Dr. Christine Joy Simpao. Thank you and have a nice day.